In today's video, we will run through 2017's drama horror, Super Dark Times. Teenagers Zach and Josh have been best friends their whole lives, but when a gruesome accident leads to a cover-up, the secret drives a wedge between them and propels them down a rabbit hole of escalating paranoia and violence. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Now like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video. Josh Templeton and Zach Taylor are two best friends who are in high school. They are in Zach's room reading the girls in his school's yearbook. While they are at it, they discuss a girl named Allison Bannister. Both Zach and Josh are attracted to her. Zach seems to like her personality while Josh is physically attracted to Allison. The boys go to the supermarket to get food. They meet their friend Daryl and a boy named Charlie. They buy the food and try it outside. Then, they go to a deserted bridge in the town and stay there for a while. After some time, they go their separate ways. Zach and Josh walk to Zach's home. On their way, a group of senior bullies stops them. The bullies mention Josh's elder brother, who is in the Marines. This agitates Josh, so he attacks the leader. But the bully is way stronger than Josh, so he strangles him. He finally lets him go after a while. Zach then takes Josh to show him Allison's house. Josh asks how he knew the address, to which Zach says from their bus route in middle school. Josh tells him about an incident at art class when Allison splurged glue over her hands, which reminded him of sperm. Zach then jokingly shouts, penis, which wakes someone at the house. They quickly run away from there. They go to Zach's house again. As Josh leaves, Zach's mom tells him that some girl named Allison had called asking for him. Zach is surprised and goes into his room with the phone to call her back. Allison's brother picks up the call. He rudely tells him that Allison is not home. However, Zach hears her voice in the background. She snatches the phone from her brother and invites Zach and Josh to her birthday party. She is celebrating it at Megan's. The following day, everyone is in school. Zach watches Allison talk to her teacher in the hallways. Josh disturbs him from behind and starts talking about something else. That day, after school, Zach, Josh, and Daryl are at Josh's house. They talk about Josh's brother being in the Marines when Daryl asks Josh if he can see his room. Josh's brother's room is filled with pictures of half-naked girls. Daryl jumps on his waterbed when he notices a stash of weed on the side table. He pleads to Josh to try some, but Josh refuses, saying that his brother will ask for it when he is back. Josh then shows them his brother's katana sword. He liked to collect weapons. The sword is very sharp. Zach and Daryl watch Josh in fascination as he poses with the sword. Josh then suggests they cut milk cartons with it, so they leave for a meadow nearby. Charlie is there too. Zach and Charlie watch Josh cut the water-filled cartons effortlessly. Just then, Zach notices Daryl smoking in the back. When asked what it is, he tells him that it is a cigarette, but Josh soon realizes that he had stolen his brother's weed. Josh gets extremely mad and asks for it back. However, Daryl refuses to give it back. They get into a fight and Zach separates them. Josh calls Daryl names, which further angers him. He attacks Josh again. They get into a fist fight. Josh has the sword in his hands. As they are fighting, Josh pushes Daryl. The sword stabs him on his neck. Everyone there is shocked. Daryl falls to the ground and starts bleeding profusely. In hopes of easing his pain, Zach pulls the sword out of his neck, but instead this makes him lose more blood. Daryl somehow stands up and starts to run away from the group. Zach and Josh rush behind him. After a while, they find him lying on the ground. Zach goes to check if Daryl is still alive, but vomits because of all the blood. Charlie comes there too. They decide to hide the body and the sword and flee. On the way to his house, Zach punches a wall in frustration and hurts his fist. At his home, Allison is waiting for him with his mom. He and Allison go into his room and talk for a while. They are almost about to kiss but stop midway. Allison leaves, Zach goes to bed. The next day at school, Zach is anxious. He looks for Josh, but he has not come to school. After school, he goes to see Charlie. Charlie, however, acts like he doesn't know Zach and tells him to not tell anyone they were ever together. Zach then goes to Josh's house to check on him. He knocks at the door, but no one opens it. When he reaches home, Zach's mother asks him if he was with Daryl the day before. Daryl's mother had called to inform he was missing yesterday. She asks Zach if he met Daryl at Josh's. Zach lies and says that the whole day he was at Josh's and Daryl was never there. Zach's mom is worried to hear the news about Daryl's disappearance. She tells Zach to always stay near the house. The next day, rumors about Daryl's disappearance spread through the school. The school announces anyone who has seen Daryl report it to the office. Zach goes to Josh's house again since he hasn't come to school. Josh's mother lets him in. Zach goes into Josh's room to find them playing video games. According to Zach, Josh not coming to school will draw attention to them. He suggests that he come to school the next day. Josh tells Zach that he has a hard time falling asleep at night. Zach suggests going to the crime scene again to check on the body, but Josh refuses to do so. 
Josh had taken Daryl's bag before running away that day. He still has it with him. He decides to burn it, but Zack asks him not to do anything before discussing it with him. Zack then assures Josh that it was just an accident and that they are not at fault. He then invites him to Allison's party. Josh doesn't want to come because he is sick. The following day at class, Zack falls asleep. He dreams about going to Daryl's body to see that Allison is there naked. He kisses her as Josh watches them. Zack finds out from other students that Josh has come to school, but he is surprised as to why Josh didn't inform Zack about coming. He goes to see if Josh is really at the school and sees him through the doors of the detention class. That night, he goes to Allison's birthday. He meets Megan who tells him that Allison is in the other room. He goes in to see Allison and several other people sitting in a circle. When she sees him, she gets up to greet him and kisses him on the cheek. Zack notices that Josh is in the room too. As they get seated, Josh gives Allison a birthday present. She opens it to reveal a stash of weed. Zack takes Josh aside to talk to him. He inquires about the weed, but Josh dismisses it. Their bully, senior John Whitcomb, asks Josh to link him with his dealer. Josh promises him that he will do it later. Everyone starts smoking at the party. This makes Zack feel out of place, so he leaves. However, Allison stops him outside and tries to convince him to stay. They almost kiss. Eventually, Zack leaves the party. The next day, Zack finds out that John Whitcomb died last night. He has fallen from a bridge. Zack remembers John and Josh's conversation from last night. Zack talks to Allison about John after school. She writes her number on his bandage. He also walks her home. She kisses his forehead and asks Zack to come inside, but he doesn't answer. Frustrated, she goes inside. When Zack gets home that day, his mother is out. He listens to a voice message from her that says she will be home late. Taking this chance, he goes to the place where they had buried Daryl. After removing some leaves from the top of his body, Zack finds Daryl's decaying corpse, but the katana sword is gone. He quickly goes back to his house and calls Allison to get Charlie's number. He calls him and tells him that Josh might have killed John Whitcomb. Zack thinks that Josh has taken the sword and also killed John. Charlie is too scared to talk about Daryl. He tells Zack never to call him again. Later that night, Zack's mom comes home with Josh. Zack takes Josh outside and asks about the missing sword. They get into an argument, after which Josh leaves. Zack's mom is worried about him after John's death. The next day, Zack goes to Josh's house. He notices that no one is home. So he takes the keys from under the doormat and sneaks into the house. Zack quickly searches for the sword in Josh's room. However, he doesn't find it. He then uses Zack's phone and checks his recent calls. He is surprised to find Allison's number on it. Zack has a feeling that Allison is in trouble. He quickly goes to her house. Her brother answers the doorbell and tells him she is at Megan's. Meanwhile, at Megan's, Josh knocks on the door and is received by the girls. He has brought the sword with him. It is wrapped around in a towel. He tells the girls that it is a surprise. Zack rushes to Megan's house. Josh offers the girls some weed. He gives it to them for free. The girls are still unaware of the sword. They go into Megan's room to smoke it. They offer Josh to smoke as well, but he tells them that he doesn't. After Allison asks him what is in the towel, he finally removes it to reveal the sword to them. Megan is in awe. She starts posing and playing with it. Meanwhile, Allison is on the bed smoking. Josh, too, smokes. Zack, however, is in the street searching for Megan's home. He runs around the street looking for it and finally finds it. He then sneaks in without making a noise. He takes a little shovel from a table in case someone attacks him. He then carefully goes upstairs to Megan's room. As he opens the door, he sees a dead Megan lying on the bed in the pool of her own blood. Meanwhile, Allison sits in the corner of the room with her hands tied. Josh calmly looks at himself in the mirror. He notices Zack when he opens the door further. He quickly closes it from the inside. Zack tries to break it, but can't. So he rushes to the street to call for help. No one hears him. He breaks into the room through the windows. When he enters the room, Josh runs outside. Allison and Megan are still there. Zack unties Allison and tells her everything will be okay. He then slowly moves downstairs looking for Josh. He attacks him through the hallways with his sword and almost kills him. Zack gets severely injured and starts to bleed when he tries to persuade Josh into giving in. He reminds him that they are best friends. Josh, on the other hand, doesn't listen and chases him outside to the streets. Just as Josh stabs Zack with the sword, a neighbor intervenes. Police cars arrive at the scene and paramedics check Zack's injuries. Josh is in one of the police cars. It is a few months later, Allison is back at the school. The movie ends as we see three healed scars on the back of her neck. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.